Hello, I'm Richard, ev for You Custom Conversions. And in this video, we're inside the cargo trailer conversion. And we're going to be focusing on a product uh, that we're using in this conversion. And that's one of the things that we'll do over time. Now, none of these products are sponsored. I purchased everything with my own money. And so these are just um, a, I don't know if I call it a review or not, but I guess it is a review. Uh, and it's just going to be an observation of these products in real, in the real world. You know, see how they, they perform in this application. Because everything was, you know, either purchased or I already had and, and, and I kind of outfitted things to work with those items which you'll see when it comes to the electrical system, the battery systems. But this was something that we purchased. I've seen it on other YouTube videos, people doing reviews and so forth. So based on its capabilities, advertised capabilities, and the space that we have, I thought it was a good fit for our application. So this is the EcoFlow Wave 2, as I mentioned. It provides both heating and air conditioning. And so in today's video, we're going to, uh, as you can tell, I'm all bundled up. We're going to be highlighting the heating aspect. Later in the year, this is early March, later in the year, we will um, show you the, the air conditioning aspect and that'll be easier uh, to do. We don't get a lot of real cold days here. This is uh, probably one of the coldest ones we've had in a while. Uh, we've actually had snow predicted. Uh, the storm seemed to kind of miss us. We didn't get any snow the last uh, two days that it was predicted. Slight chance again tomorrow morning. So the overnight low um, was uh, 31 degrees. I know most places in the country and around the world that's uh, toasty this time of year, but for us that's cold. Um, and so we're also inside a warehouse. Now it's not heated, uh, so you know it's, it's not warm in here, but it's also not as cold as the outside ambient air. So getting started. I checked the temperature both on my vehicle, which is parked in here, and on a, uh, a, a thermometer that's on the wall in the shop warehouse. It says 44 degrees. Well, the, temper in, the temperature in the warehouse is 44 degrees. My car, the, the gauge in the car, says it's 44. This one on the bathroom wall back here shows it's 44 also. So that's the outside ambient air that we're dealing with. Um, and that's actually colder than it is outside. <laughs> outside the warehouse, it's actually warmer right now. I think when I pulled up outside, it was uh, 47 degrees or something. So anyway, what we're going to do is we're going to see how long this takes to bring this up to a comfortable temperature inside the trailer. And we're going to time that and we're going to, you know, look at the temperature. Now, as a baseline, I'm going to show you several different ones. I told you what the temperature is outside. I'll show you a glimpse of the thermometer. Uh, but let's take a look at one that I have inside the trailer. And I've moved it behind where you are now, the camera, uh, to the furthest point, in the V of the trailer, in the bathroom. So I'm as far away from the heater as possible. Normally I have the, the uh, little weather station thing sitting right here on the counter next to the microwave oven. But for this, we got it the other side, so it has to heat up the entire area for it to really register. I thought that was a little better test 
So I'm going to show you what those readings are because they don't agree with the car and the one on the wall. So let's take a look at that. So here's the countertop in the bathroom with the little weather station set up sitting there. Let me zoom in on that. And you can see that, like I said, early March when we're filming this, it's just about noontime. And uh, it's currently showing that it's 48.5 degrees outside. Well, that sending unit is on the outside of the trailer. So that's the skin of the trailer that's probably picking up some of that temperature. But anyway, basically a four and a half degree uh, variance from what we're showing elsewhere in the warehouse. Um, and then it's showing the inside temperature to be about a degree lower. So, you know, this has been closed up. It gets cold in here and it just stays cold in here. So that's what we're starting with. We got 64% humidity. And so we've got, uh, you know, our timestamp and our temperature stamps for the get go. So let me turn on the Eco Wave, Eco Flow Wave 2. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to open these little compartment doors in the back of the trailer. These are the exhaust and intake for the Eco Flow Wave 2. So I'll unlock those and uh, and that's first thing. Okay. I didn't film me unlocking them because I'm not used to this trailer yet and there's quite a few keys I had to figure out which key opened these. Anyway, the bottom one is the intake air and the upper one is the exhaust. And so that's the vent setup for the Eco, Wave, Eco Flow Wave 2. Exhaust on the bottom, I mean, intake on the bottom, exhaust on top. That way, if this top flapper ever to, to come loose, um, it's, I got a magnet, but it, you know, we could tape it if in your high winds or something. But if it did come loose, it's still not going to cause a problem because it's the exhaust and it would be able to blow that you know cover out and, and not affect the exhausting I already tested it believe me it works fine but we wouldn't want to block the intake so gravity is going to hold that down no worries there so I'm going to use the app on my phone I don't know how well that shows up but I'm going to turn it on and so now it's turned on Let's see if I can zoom in on it a little bit better. Right now it's just on fan. Oh, wrong direction. I think it's on fan. That blue light, is that the fan? Or what? Yep, that's the fan. So... I'm going to press the heat, change the mode, yep, and uh, it's set on 86 degrees, which is the max. We'll just leave it there. Let her crank, and we'll see how long it takes. 159. So it's saying the ambient air is. 48.5 okay 48.6 so that's what it's showing on the unit itself and uh, we'll um, back off if this shows up in the camera better okay so there you have it so that's the unit doing its trick um, it's saying that the um, air outlet temperature 50.8 degrees and that of course is going to keep warming up and warming up as this thing gets cranking so I'll come back 
with some uh, updates. And, and one is, you know, when it gets to 65 degrees, that's the minimum temperature for me. And then we'll take it up to 68 or 70 and see how long it takes for those thresholds. Okay, <clears throat> while we're waiting for the interior of the trailer to heat up, let's take a look at uh, where we are about 10 minutes in. We're sitting at about 40, well, we're about the same temperature inside and out on the, the weather station in there. Uh, it shows that on the uh, EcoFlow Wave 2, and I'm getting lots of glare there, uh, the outlet the air outlet temperature is 95.2 degrees and um, I've got it on max now that I didn't originally uh, it says the ambient air temperature according to this is 56, 57 degrees so warmer out here than it is back in the bathroom according to this so we're gonna keep let it run but in the meantime I thought I'd give you some specs so this thing uh, has uh, you know different inputs that it'll run on uh, right now I'm running it on AC I've got the shore power plugged in uh, but it runs on uh, you know 100 to 240 volt 50 to 60 Hertz AC 520 watt max so it's not not a lot of draw you know for this type of thing heating and air conditioning um, there's a car charger input and it's 96 uh, watts at uh, 12 volts 192 watts 24 volts 8 amps max so I'm not going to charge real fast uh, the weight of this thing is 32 pounds that's without the battery the um, extra or the the battery it doesn't come with the battery the, the optional battery that I have it weighs I saw it earlier I want to say it's tw oh gee now when you want to try to find something you can't see it uh, Oh, there it is 17.2 pounds so um, you know the, <laughs> the battery's a third of my total weight but anyway um, I, I wanted that battery I wanted to be able to run on its own it's kind of its own separate unit um, the uh, noise level 44 to 56 decibels and it's you know four feet from me and uh, you know it's not it's not that loud it's not bad at all um, the add-on battery power says solar input 11 to 60 volts 13 amps 400 watt max um, and these are direct inputs you know uh, add-on battery power 700 watt max dimensions it's a R290 refrigerant. Okay, here's one of the things I wanted to share, and that is the cooling area. Now, it says 107.6 square feet, and the trailer, without everything we put in here, and it wasn't exactly that even, it's, it's rated as a, uh, so these are outside dimensions. 8 foot by 16 foot trailer. So that would be a maximum of 128 cubic feet. Well, like I said, we're actually not that. So we're not far off from what the um, thing is rated for. That's why we decided to go this route. Um, we thought that they'd be a good match, and we're going to see. Um, cooling capacity. Uh, 1500 watts, uh, 5100 BTU. Heating capacity, which is what we're dealing with today, 
1800 watts, 6100 BTU. Um, it gives you ambient temperature for storage, charge temperature, all that. Uh, temperature setting range, um, basically 60 to 86 degrees Fahrenheit. At 16 to 16 C to 30 C. Um, operating temperature, blah blah blah. Let's say uh, rated heating input power. 600 watts AC 540 watts DC rated cooling input power 500 watts in or, or AC and uh, 495 uh, DC so you can see it's it's it, you know that was the thing you know uh, there's lots of different ways to go uh, and this just seemed to be the most economical now this will run on the uh, attached battery for eight hours on the eco mode and uh, according to their literature so you know we'll test all that in, in the real world environment now this trailer like I said everything in here was nice and cold <laughs> there's a lot of stuff in here so we have a lot of mass to heat up uh, that's affecting you know how fast this thing's going to heat up the trailer. It's not just heating up the air, it's heating up all this mass that is keeping the air cool. So we'll see. Uh, we'll cut back in a little bit. I don't think I mentioned, but the the size of the uh, add-on battery is 1159 watt hours and like I said if you're just using that uh, on the eco mode um, they say eight hours and I don't remember if that was heating or cooling I think it was cooling eight hours um, but you know that really isn't a, a big issue with me this is just extra battery because we have uh, you know, including this, we've got over 16.5 kilowatt hours of onboard storage on this trailer. So I can charge that battery, you know, many times over. <laughs> but it's nice to just have it run alone. It's got a sleep mode and, like I said, eco mode and all sorts of settings that I'm not going into. I'm kind of a simple guy. I use things, you know, pretty much all or none. So, you know, if I'm running it at night and we want it to stay cool, I'll have it on the eco mode so it's nice and quiet and so forth. Um, and of course, that would be depending on the temperature, but most likely you'd be running on the eco mode if you're running it overnight. Um, and then the next day, I can charge it using, you know, one of my three battery packs, which would be being charged if it's a hot and so forth. It's probably going to be sunny out. We're using the air conditioning, then boom, we'll be charging things with solar. So we're hoping that'll work well. And like I said, this summer we'll do the air conditioning test to let you know how that that goes. But today we're working on the heat, and we're finally where we're a degree warmer inside than outside according to my weather station. While I'm waiting for this thing to heat things up and do our test on the EcoFlow Wave 2 heat, I'm going to do some work on my computer. So I'm going to set up this. Now I can sit at the bench over here but like I mentioned in an earlier video, these things came, these cushions came vacuum packaged and were scrunched down to nothing. And you're supposed to uh, put those in the sun and let them, uh, <laughs> and, and let them uh, heat up. And unfortunately, we haven't had any sun lately, and it's been cold, so 
I haven't had the opportunity for those to heat up. So I'm just going to sit here like yay and work on my laptop. Now I could also swing this around because this table fits both directions. I could put it like this. I'll put my carcass right there and I'm going to be really toasty warm. <laughs> anyway, I'm also going to block the heat, so I'm not going to do it that way. I'll swing it around the other way. But, um, yeah. i got to do something while I'm waiting on this thing. This is our one hour update. So, I've had the EcoFlow Wave 2 on for an hour, and uh, currently the outside temperature, according to the weather station, is 49 degrees and we're 54 up against the front of the trailer. Uh, according to the EcoFlow Wave 2, it says the ambient temperature, <coughs> excuse me, says the ambient temperature is 61.3 degrees. So, um, no, we're, we're, we're making progress but we haven't come as far as I was uh, hoping at, at this point in time. So like I said, our, our goal is to get it up to 65 and, uh, and then that's going to be you know a, a benchmark for me and then that, then from there to 68 or 70 degrees, which is you know short sleeve comfortable. At 54, I'm still bundled up, although I'm, I'm comfortable. You know, it's blowing on me, and, and I'm nice and comfortable, actually. Uh, and it says that the outlet temperature, air outlet temperature, is 94.6 degrees. So, yeah, sitting here working, I'm nice and comfortable. Um, but you wouldn't be, you know, stripping down <laughs> at this point. I'm still going to stay bundled up. So, uh We'll continue on, and I'll come back with uh, another update. We're about an hour and a half in, and you can see it's still 49 on the outside wall of the trailer, and it's 57 inside. Okay, so like I said, we're a little over an hour and a half in, and uh, this thing just, I don't know. It, uh, it just like it just shut off for a minute and it's making noises now and I don't know what's going on no air is blowing out uh, nothing's coming in or exhausting in or out the uh, the vent system so anyway I, I've moved the camera back here because I was going to discuss something else before this <laughs> this I, and I don't know if uh, condensers freezing up or something uh, I, I'm not sure what what's going on with this thing like I said I just checked the outside temperature and it's uh, 45 degrees like I said the one on the side of the trailer I you know I don't trust because it's not on the side of the trailer in the bathroom we're showing 57 degrees inside and the um, EcoFlow Wave 2 uh, showed quite a drop in the ambient air temperature so I don't know what's going on there um, it's coming back up the air outlet temperature is coming back up so evidently it's kicking back on it may have cycled off to kind of defrost itself or something um, not familiar with this unit it's the, you know we, we've tested it in the office when we first received it to make sure it was working it seemed to work fine but I don't have any you know history or experience with this so this is our first time to see how it worked in the trailer 
I got to say, you know, I'm not overly impressed an hour and a half, and we're only up to 57 degrees. But, you know, that's the other end of the trailer. I understand that's in, in the nose of the trailer up against the wall, front wall of the trailer, a good 14 feet or so away. But a couple things I've observed. We're starting to blow a little bit of air again. Looks like she's cycling back on. But one of the things I've noticed, oops, is, you know, of course the exhaust is very cold. But it's also kind of leaking around these fittings here. So where it fits against the, uh, you know, this attachment here, which is got moisture on it. So yeah, I think uh, I think it cycled off because the uh, the coils in there were getting iced up, and I had to let them thaw. But anyway, um, I thought from the beginning I would probably end up where there's see there's moisture forming on the outside of this. I don't know if it shows up on the camera. I'd probably have to zoom in more. But there's a little bit of moisture on that, you know, condensation. Which, you know, cold air going through a plastic tube and the warmer air in here, you know, so that's just that's natural. But anyway, what I was getting at is I think that I would um, insulate these tubes and tape around, uh, you know, the uh, the unit itself and the, the vent system to cut down on escaping air and to cut down on this condensation, that kind of thing. Um, and I think that escaping air is, is not helping things. And like I said, plus the trailer's been sitting here, so all of this is, you know, cold. So it's not like we just came in here and the air was was cold and we're trying to warm things up. No, it's, uh, everything's been this way all winter long, nice and cold in here. So we've got all of this thermal mass to overcome. Let me zoom down out. Anyway, so that's uh, the status report. We're looking at uh, oh, an hour and 42 minutes. Eco Flow Wave 2 is again blowing hot air. We're back up to 86.6 degrees Fahrenheit blowing out. And the uh, ambient air temperature, it's, it's, it's coming up gradually just keeps incrementing up so it's going to be more accurate I think it, uh, it may have reversed itself to heat up those coils and cause them to to uh, defrost but anyway seems to be working fine now just went through some kind of routine which I'm going to assume is normal <laughs> at this point um, but you know you're sitting here and all of a sudden it goes click. <laughs> You're like, what? So, anyway. Um, I think we're we're back in the game. But, like I said, I'm kind of disappointed in the uh, the time it's taking to heat this up. Uh, on one hand, I kind of am not surprised, but like I said, on the other hand, I'm kind of disappointed. But, the reality is, you know, we looked at the BTU ratings and so forth so yeah it's it's going to be best at maintaining and of course it always takes a lot less energy to maintain something than it does to um, you know either warm it up or cool it down so we'll see how it does you know if this had been you know a day where the, the outside temperature had been a certain thing and then overnight you know it dropped and um, we could have set this thermostatically to come on at a certain temperature and I think it would have maintained that 
just fine. Um, but we'll continue with our our investigation here of how this thing performs and I'll be back. Well I've got somewhere to be so I'm gonna cut this test short. You can see we're almost at three and a half hours and we're still not the 65 degrees we're at 63. Now I have been in and out the door multiple times so that hasn't helped <laughs> in any way at all. It's actually starting to feel warm in here in the main portion of the trailer but up against the front wall there it's obviously 63 degrees um, and um, one of the things that I discovered uh, well hang on let me swing the camera around it just quit make that, making that noise I uh, was thinking about this thing you know shutting off like I said I I, I, I think it was kind of doing its defrost thing and sure enough I went outside and looked and that little squeaky noise I hear that's a pump and it's actually draining a little you know condensation sump or reservoir whatever it has and uh, so yeah it's I got a pretty good sized puddle underneath my trailer <laughs> anyway yeah now it's kicking back on you can hear there's a change and it'll start yeah, the fan starts picking up and we we'll start cranking out some heat. Okay, so let's take a look at the uh, results from our test of EcoFlow Wave 2 and heating our 8 by 16 foot cargo trailer. A reminder that the, the trailer is insulated. Uh, we have uh, one inch, um, and it's the, uh, I don't know what they call it solid core foam insulation whatever if you look at our early videos you'll see what we used anyway we have an inch in the floor and the walls and an inch and a half on the back wall and the ceiling and so the measurement was taken the EcoFlow Wave 2 is at the very back of the trailer um, just a foot from the wall and then the measurements we took were at the end of the V nose in the bathroom. And so it's far away from the heat sources we could get. And so this is the, the results that we came up with. And so we started at noon. And uh, the temperature in the warehouse was 44 degrees. And the temperature inside the trailer was 48 degrees. And the humidity was the same in both. Um, so anyway, about an hour and a half later, temperature in the warehouse is still the same. We had raised the temperature inside the trailer nine degrees. Humidity had dropped uh, inside and out, but most notably inside the trailer. Um, and then we talked about the uh, the fact that I was going in and out of the trailer a lot of times. I had other things going on besides this test, and I was doing stuff on the computer. Then I'd go outside in the warehouse, and so I really went in and out the door a lot of times, which wasn't uh, in the EcoFlow <laughs> Wave Two's favor. But uh, what um, what we got after you know, almost three and a half hours was the temperature in the warehouse had gone up a degree, uh, but we had raised the temperature in the nose of the trailer to 63 degrees. Humidity had dropped both outside and inside, inside uh, down to 58%. And we had a 15 degree um, increase in, in the inside temperature. And uh, you know, it was interesting, you know, the thing was shut down. I think it did it uh, two times, maybe three times that, that the unit shut down and uh, for lack of the, the proper term, I guess, I'm just gonna say it defrosted itself and pumped water out, um, you know, got rid of the condensation that was in its 
tray or sump or whatever it has. I don't, don't know. Um, but anyway, it would stop and then you'd hear this little squealing noise and that's the pump. And it would be pumping out the condensation and I'd have it draining underneath the, the trailer back there. And so all that was working and that was good. But So it's not like the heater, you know, electric resistive heat that's basically on except for when it gets, you know, to your thermostatic setting and then shuts off. This thing did cycle two or three times in the test period. And the on and off time, um, maybe it's off a total of five minutes or a little more the time it gets back up to full temperature. Maybe it's about 10 minutes. But anyway, that's the way the thing operates. That seemed to be, you know, like I said, I don't know much about the thing. Uh, as far as its internal workings, but I'm kind of figuring that out as we go ahead and that seemed to be normal and I'm glad it purges itself and we don't have to worry about uh, condensation pooling in the trailer or anything. So because I had uh, some place to be, basically called it at, uh, you know, three and a half hours and uh, as I was taking my laptop out of the trailer and the camera and doing a few other things. I moved the uh, little weather station that I used and I moved it to its normal position which is basically uh, a little more central in the uh, trailer. It sits on the counter next to the microwave and so I moved it there and it sat there for oh, I don't know five minutes or so and I just happened to glance at it as I was getting ready to exit the trailer for the last time. And that was at 3.39, so just, you know, three hours and 39 minutes into this test. The temperature in the warehouse had gone up a degree. And like I said, in the center of the trailer, we were up to 65 degrees, which was my minimum target. I actually wanted to run it a little bit longer, but I ran out of time to get it up to 68 or 70 degrees. And I think at the rate that it was going, that would have probably been, you know, around four o'clock. That's my, my opinion. You can see the humidity come down, you know, away since the start. And uh, we had a 17 degree increase in temperature. I think this thing's going to work fine for us. Uh, our main objective is to follow 70 degrees, so we're not looking to go places that are real hot or real cold. We'll probably be more hot places than cold places, uh, just based on what we've done in the past. We like the Western U.S. Um, and the other is, you know, when we have used the heater in the past in our trailers, it's just typically in the morning for, you know, an hour or two. Um, and if you, if you have the thermostat set on this thing and, and say it's going to dip down kind of cold at night, you set the thermostat at 65 in this thing, keep it at 65 in the trailer. It will use a lot less energy to maintain temperature than it does to try to increase the temperature. So, you know, I wish it performed better, but, you know, that's <laughs> not realistic because, you know, it, it is a, a kind of an energy sipping device. It's not, not taking a lot of energy. And of course, it's not putting out a lot of BTUs. So all things considered, uh, I was happy with the performance and the way the thing worked. It's not very noisy. It's nice and quiet. It, um, you know, pumps the, the condensation outside the trailer. Um, you can set, you know, a sleep mode. You can, you know, it's got a you know, thermostat, all that. So it's, it's, it's a nice unit. And, um, uh, I'm anxious to see how it does on the air conditioning side of things, since that's what we will probably use the most, because we like like it to be cool at night when we sleep. So that's when the air conditioning would be used the most is you know in the evening before you go to bed and 
and to maintain a nice cool temperature while you're sleeping. So we'll bring you the, the air conditioning test at a later time. I thank you for watching and hope I uh, didn't bore you too much and, and hopefully you got some insights regarding the capability and operation of the EcoFlow Wave 2 heating aspects. Anyway, I uh, hope you like and uh, subscribe and hope to see you next time.